Welcome to the Defense and Airspace Report. I'm Vago Maradian in Norfolk, Virginia, where we're covering NATO Allied Command Transformations, Chiefs of Transformation uh, Conference here. Uh, it is a gathering of transformation leaders from across the Atlantic Alliance to discuss better ways of doing business. And we're honored to have with us Lieutenant General Steve Shepro, who is the Deputy Chief of NATO's Military Committee. Sir, thanks for joining us. No, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Vago. Um, you know, why is it, you know, why is this conference so important for you to take time out of your busy schedule, you know, at a, at a strategic important time to come here and spend a couple of days in Norfolk. Well, you said the key word, strategic, and it sometimes you have to step back and you have to think strategically. So with everything that's going along, around in the world today and everything that's going on, it's important to say, where are we right now and where are we going with respect to the security challenges that face the alliance and face the European continent? Um, this is uh, America's home. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, NATO in America is here in Norfolk in Allied Command Transformation. Obviously, General Mercier has a very full plate and an agenda of innovation and transformation that he's trying to drive. What's, what's the importance from somebody who's sitting uh, over in Europe in Brussels? You know, why is this so important? You know, why is this command so important to the Alliance? Well, again, this command is focused on not only strategy, not only transformation, but exercises and everything that supports what the whole alliance does. So I don't think you could detach it as being a separate part of the team. It's not just as much as operations is. And so as we look at the Warsaw Summit and the important decisions that were made there and projecting stability as well as defense and deterrence, this command has is central to, again, the direction we are going to plotting that course and to exercising it and ensuring that we have the capability, the plans, the vector in place and the vision in place. Um, you know, what are, from a capability standpoint, you know, you just mentioned that. What, you know, obviously NATO came out of the Warsaw Summit with the 21 capability areas, the, the priorities. But what are the top things that you and the senior staff over in the Alliance are working on? You know, what are the top things that you guys are trying to drive uh, out there into the force? No, well, we're really working on implementing all the decisions that were made. You know, take, for, take forward presence, for instance. So that was decision number one. So you have enhanced forward presence, you have tailored forward presence, but together they represent forward presence. So in order for forward presence to be a deterrent and to be a defensive tool and to project stability, you need to think about the important things like command and control, like intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance, like communications. So all of those things we're looking at as how to implement what's a good concept, how to make it effective, how to make it credible. And really, you know, the alliance is re-energizing, you know, like probably like it hasn't in several years. Yeah. Um, what, you know, obviously with any change of administration, there's a degree of trepidation. There is, I think, slightly heightened trepidation here regarding uh, what Russia's future role will, will be, the relationship it will have with the new American administration. Uh, there was a little bit of concern about Rose Gottemuller and, and talk about maybe re having her reassigned. And, and uh, you know, although there are folks who dispute the, the nature of that story still fundamentally. But what are some of the concerns you're hearing? Uh, you're an American, but you're actually a NATO officer at this point. What are some of the concerns you're hearing? How are uh, folks addressing? addressing them, and then more broadly, what's the, the importance of the United States to the NATO alliance? Well, I think you've heard the Secretary General address this on several occasions. The United States, of course, is very important to the alliance. In its long 67-year history, the alliance has been a transatlantic alliance. So obviously the United States has been very central to that. So I think right now there's a lot of wait and see, but the United States will always be an important part of the alliance. Um, let me ask you about the future conflict. Um, you know, there are those who say that, um, you know, potentially the alliance should not be focusing as much, for example, on armored unit, you know, R Russian armored units, for example, coming across the border, uh, that, you know, the, the real danger is from... Um, sort of operations other than war, sort of undermining of local governments. You know, we've seen Russian, you could argue from a Russian perspective, progress in Latvia, for example. Um, you know, the notion of little green men showing up somewhere that Sandy Virchbau so, so, so artfully said. Um, you know, what, what do you see and what does the senior staff sort of see as the future of conflict and how the alliance is going to try to get to that? And I want to follow up with also asking about strategic messaging, which is a really important component of this. 
Right. Well, I'll try to answer both because it's important to underscore again what came out of Warsaw, and that was the emphasis on the 360-degree strategy and the coherence of the alliance. So everything you mentioned is important. You know, it's important to assure defense and deterrence, as well as project security around that 360-degree arc. So it's all important, and it's all, again, coming out of Warsaw, it's, it, they all have been points of emphasis that are being worked on. And for strategic messaging, um, I know that this has been something the Alliance has been talking about. Uh, you know, what, what more do you think can be done so that the Alliance can tell what is a remarkably positive message and to counter, you would argue easily, the Russian disinformation, for example, that goes along with trying to undermine that, that alliance, which is the most successful alliance in history? Well, there's a good talking point right there. Uh, it is successful, and why is it successful? It's values-based. It represents um, a significant portion of the world economy, trade, of course, values, like I said, and capability. And so I think if there's any narrative, it's a positive one, that the alliance is proving to be more relevant than ever, especially in this complex age. Um, sir, thanks very much. We really appreciate it and hope to see you uh, over, over in Brussels one of these days. Thank you, Vago. Looking forward to that, too.